Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. My aunt has a vintage travel trunk in her living room. It actually looks like it came right off the deck of one of the Titanic's sister ships. It's enormous. It has wide straps, and it's very heavy. And for me, growing up, it was always just closed up and was like any other piece of furniture in the home. But now that she's older, when I come to visit, she's asked me to open it with her. So after all these decades, can you imagine the suspense? Could this be like C.S. Lewis's portal into Narnia? <laughs> Would we get sucked in? Who knows? But once we opened the lid and the musty smell rose up, we found it to be absolutely packed with generational memories, much like a hope chest. And so now whenever I visit her, we lift the lid and we take out just one thing. So, so far, we have found a small, unframed watercolor painting, a baby bonnet, a handwritten letter, and an embroidered hanky. And we've only just begun. It takes a long time because each piece is very old and delicate, and it needs special handling, and it has a long story to go with it. It's a slow excavation of the people who cared for the people who cared for us and influenced who we are. So opening it has always had that magical quality. Time seems to stand still, and we don't know what the next thing will be. But as we move along, we receive insights into who we were, who we came from, and how that past is still with us today. So I must tell you, as Christians, this is what the season of Lent is for us. Our definition of family is wide, and our roots are ancient. Along with over two billion Christians around the world, we all open our musty travel trunks at the same time just as Christians have done every year for 1,694 years. Yes, the first 40-day season of Lent was in the year 330. You can check my math. So that is some serious lineage and some serious company. Lent was a season 200 years before Christmas was a feast day in the church. It's our changeless core that ironically asks us to change every single year. For the watchword for Lent has always been repent. Now before I came, became a priest, hearing the word repent brought an image of someone standing on a street corner holding a sign, right? Felt pretty intimidating and even threatening. But now I know it springs from Jesus' desire for us to follow him. Repent simply means to turn and see in a new way. In our baptismal covenant, we, we vow to turn towards Christ. And although we renew our vows every year, Lent is a season designed to ensure that we actually do it. But we all know that turning can be difficult, especially when we're weighted down, and it can take a long time. And that's why for centuries, Lent calls us every year to enter into the wilderness of our lives. You know, those heavy parts that we like to keep closed and disguised as everyday furniture in our homes, like the contents of my aunt's travel trunk our wildernesses are filled with stories that are old and fragile, that need special handling, that are best dealt with one by one, and it takes a long time. In this way, author Joan Chittister says, we will see what we have allowed ourselves to become 
so that we can begin to be all the rest we are meant to be. Only by being open and truthful with ourselves and God can we turn towards Christ and see through his eyes. So I ask you, are you ready to open your vintage trunk this Lent? It could be scary, could be musty, but I remind you that you are never alone to whatever God calls you to do. So I invite you to come to our Wednesday Lenten soup suppers. So after equipping you with a good meal, no one will have an empty stomach. You and your table will be guided by some carefully crafted questions about entering the wilderness and going beyond as well. Questions like, Whose love makes you feel brave? Where in your, in your life have you noticed a shift from perfectionism to presence? Has your definition of sin changed over time? Where did you feel pain this week? Together, we can share our answers and our stories in a way that helps us start to unpack our heaviness. <clears throat> Repent and turn and see all the rest you are meant to be. Joan Chittister says that Lent is about opening our hearts one more time to the word of God in the hope that this time, hearing it anew, we might allow ourselves to become new. My aunt's trunk is very deep, and we're just at the top. But as we work our way down into it, we may need some extra light. And similarly, as we open up and go deeper into the wilderness of our lives, it may feel darker. And it can be tempting to pick up some familiar false lights to help orient, it, orient us you know what yours are. But these false lights don't help because they aren't real light. There's only one true light that can guide us, and he is always there by our side all along the way. Jesus is saying, turn and see in my new way. Follow me and resurrect with me again on Easter morning. Amen.